difference between anterior oblique system and posterior oblique system is going to be the anterior oblique system is going to be more kind of this uh, uh, it, it's going to be more flexing type of mo motion right uh, so so we are talking about basically like a sucker kick for the uh, posterior uh, oblique system it's going to be just like you said it's going to be mostly extension right so it's going to be just the opposite going the opposite way right so and these are two major systems we're talking about how basically we're discussing uh, how a healthy body should function right so first of all inner unit always no matter what type of uh, motion no matter what type of uh, movement uh, or throwing a ball or or doing bench press inner unit should should fire first so those are the uh, multifidus from the back, transverse abdominis from the front, diaphragm, pelvic floor. That that like that that core should uh, should be the first one that fires, and only after that we go with the shoulders, with the hips, with the thighs. Those are going to be so-called outer unit structures. Those are going to be global movers, and now we are talking about global mover structures. So there are sub subcategories. Okay, all right. So posterior posterior oblique system or POS posterior oblique system consists of latissimus dorsi, tensor fascia lati and contralateral gluteus maximus again it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be like a diagonal line from one side shoulder towards the other side skip and uh, just a bit down right latissimus dorsi left side shoulder towards right side's hip diagonally then we are talking about left side's latissimus dorsi we can see that the fibers go under sort of like under like 45 degree angle right um, we will basically go, go right across towards the other side thoracolumbar fascia uh, thoracolumbar fascia and contralateral Contralateral gluteus maximus. Uh, most of these, uh, most of these systems will have some sort of a tendinous or ligamentous uh, um, tissue right in between. That's that is actually what it, what is gonna give give that force, give that strength, tensile strength to it. The oblique system starts from one side, one side uh, latissimus dorsi through thoracolumbar fascia and continues into the uh, contralateral gluteus maximus and actually uh, actually it goes uh, further down because uh, we can see that uh, gluteus maximus actually will help will actually will insert into tensor fascia lati on the other side right there which which continues down the thigh Right, so we have a tensor fascia lati muscle. That's the lateral, basically lateral fascia of the thigh. So let's summarize this. One side's latissimus dorsi, thoracolumbar fascia. So thoracic lumbar region, thoracolumbar fascia, and then other sides, TFL uh, and the uh, gluteus maximus. Contralateral. Latissimus dorsi from this side. Thoracolumbar fascia in between. Gluteus maximus on the other side. Opposing so contralateral as well as the uh, tensor fascia lati on, on the other on the opposite side. These muscles are usually underused. They are huge, they are big, but they are usually underused if the balance is off. If let's say anterior oblique system is overpowering posterior oblique system, we can end up in a situation where uh, gluteal muscles are uh, so so out of balance that they actually uh, start underperform and actually uh, biceps, uh, so the hamstrings, right? So these these guys here will start to take over, and this is very very important point. Um, major major problem for many athletes gluteal amnesia
when you are lying flat on the ground, face down, when we when we raise the heel up towards the ceiling, gluteal should fire first. Not 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 your hamstrings, gluteals. Let's say somebody is underperforming, for example. If if we fix this muscle imbalance, uh, results could skyrocket, because uh, gluteus maximus is the main hip extensor. We are not talking about uh, the thigh, the thigh, thigh muscles. Again, uh, usually the the strongest muscles are going to be the ones that are a little bit shorter. Uh, maybe maybe you can recall for the shorter girdle, we were we were talking about subscapularis, which is just below scapula, on anterior surface of the scapula, which is the main internal rotator. Like you would think that you know, like let's say uh, pectorals or you know, like these bigger muscles are main internal tears. They are very powerful, but they are not the most powerful. They are just because of the angle. They are, they are. They don't have the leverage. They are longer, more slender muscles. Uh, this one is just below, and it's shorter. Uh, it's stronger. Maybe, maybe you can recall. I was, I was giving an example with the crab with two different. Uh, Two different claws one claw longer which is mo mostly used for picking stuff up but the shorter one is the one that will, he will crack the crack the uh, shells and stuff like that right so again they're very smart you know like uh, very smart design so here we're talking about pretty much the same thing here so uh, these are more slender more long muscles but they are not the main hip extensor that at least they shouldn't be uh, gluteus maximus is the main hip extensor and we should keep it that way easy to test put one hand on top of gluteus the other hand on uh, hamstrings ask the guy to lift the heel up if if you feel if you feel mu uh, muscle fiber shortening here first and basically if you feel if you feel some sort of contraction happening below below the buttock that means that uh, uh, that uh, there's muscle disbalance and we definitely should correct that uh, maybe I mean like let's say if we are talking about performance uh, like let's say um, squat he could easily uh, add probably another 10 20 kilograms on, on the performance if if we if we fix this situation if, if actually there is that situation there what we, what we, we have is this uh, what causes this It is usually that it's it's a habitual habitual pattern. You have been doing that uh, that type of movement, that type of. Um, I mean, you have been evolving those muscles, those muscle fibers for that particular motion, whatever that is, for quite a long time. And that's that's. I mean, it could be anything. It could be either posture. What was that? What causes the problem? Yeah. But what? what Yeah, you look at you look at uh, we, okay. So like, let's say if if we're talking about um, okay, let's step back. Uh, let let's step uh, step backwards a bit. So anterior oblique system weakness. You will you will we will see increased lordotic curl. That's that's the symptom. That's the symptom right there. That means that uh, anterior oblique system is weak, and at the same time, lower back muscles are tight. So lower back muscles should 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 need stre stretching, and uh, anterior oblique system muscles, uh, anterior oblique system uh, muscles, though, as we said, uh, external abdominal oblique on one side, internal abdominal oblique on the other side. It continues down to hip adductors on the other side. That needs strengthening. So if you see somebody with increased lordotic curve, that's I mean there's that's it, it, you don't really have to have, you don't have to investigate any farther than that it's visual you can see that that's the symptom for for posterior oblique system uh, like the symptom it, like the easiest way to for to to determine the weakness is uh, this test what I'm talking about ask 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 the patient or the client to, to lift the heel up put one one side's hand on 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 the butt the other side's hand on the posterior thigh posterior thigh muscles fire that's it so there is basically basically what that means gluteus maximus is underperforming gluteus maximus may be strong but it's not in it's it's just a habitual pattern that 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 uh, for some reason happen it's the way you walk it's the way you sit it's the way you it's the way you stand it's the way you 
do anything, any of these things. It's, we're not talking only about uh, uh, some sort of like, let's say, training, because training really, you know, I mean, if you are heavily involved in t- into training, maybe you'll be exercising a couple times a day, even, you know, for like uh, maybe five, six, six days a week. Uh, but really, we are talking about only, only uh, let's say if we have 24 hours in, in, in our day, we are talking about only a couple of hours of, of that day we actually we would train. The rest of the day we are doing all this other stuff. We are sitting, we are walking, we are, we are you know, doing basic, basic daily stuff. So it's it's mostly like the reason I I I hope that I'm answering your question. Uh, you're asking why why is this happening? That's why it's hap- Why it is happening? It is usually actually all these activities that you would do throughout your whole day, not not really not not what you do in your tra- training so much. I mean it 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 will affect it of course, and that's I mean we should we should go towards that. We should we should change this uh, these muscle these imbalances. Uh, we should work towards proper posture, proper balance. 